Hugel culture. Hugel culture is a Germanic word, uh, basically meaning wood covered with soil. It's, uh, it's an observation of what happens naturally in a forest, an ancient forest, when trees fall and decades of leaves fall on that and it begins to break down until it becomes this rich, nutrient dense, uh, basically compost log, right? So when we have organic matter on our sites, instead of exporting that, because you really never want to export organic matter from your site. Organic matter turns into soil. So if you're exporting your organic matter, you're exporting your potential soil. So a creative way to do that is through this technique called Hugel culture. And it's basically taking your wood and covering it ideally generously with soil and allowing it to break down. And as it breaks down and it begins to release nutrients and it acts like a sponge for holding moisture. Now, hue culture beds can be anything from, you know, a couple of twigs and prunings, you know, on a garden sized bed to, you know, six feet tall, large logs using machinery. Um, they all have their place and they're all doing a similar function. Time will vary in how fast they break down. Also, you know, how much soil cover you put over your logs will also play a role in how fast it's breaking down and how soon you can begin to plant into it. So you can use almost any kind of wood that you have. If you have older, already rotten wood, then you're a few steps ahead. If you have fresh wood, that's fine too. Um, I find a, a, a ratio of about 60 to 70% soil to wood gives you a nice jump start. It gives you enough of a depth of soil to begin planting into. But know that for you know, a number of seasons, your hue culture bed will be breaking down and there'll be some movement in that bed. So on the tops of the beds, I will usually do a ground cover. I'll usually do like my running comfrey or mints. Uh, you could also cast seeds on that and do more traditional ground covers. And then I'll usually put like raspberries or some kind of bush fruits like elderberries on them. Something that can take that movement uh, and either re-sprout or re-root itself. But I find the sweet spot, even at the very beginning of creating new culture beds for planting, say, pawpaws, is in that concave, you know, where the soil is somewhat sort of slothed off when you've put it on. And there's a depth there and there's not any logs in that section, but it's right next to those breaking down logs. That's the sweet spot. I usually plant that with, a, with say, a pawpaw, knowing that as that breaks down, the roots of the pawpaw will be able to go and absorb those nutrients and water right next door. Now you can also position your hueculture beds to a uh, east-west direction to create microclimates. So on the north side, you know, you would have afternoon shade, great spot for your currants and your gooseberries. And on your southern side, great spot for your pawpaws, figs. So you can play with these to create microclimates as well. If you put them perpendicular to the slope, they can also act as a water harvester, similar to like a swale. But be mindful that, you know, that it's not maybe perfectly on contour because you don't want too much water to build up against a bunch of logs and blow out. Right. <laughs> so maybe tilt it a little bit so it is absorbing water. But if you get a heavy amount of water, it's not pushing the whole hueculture bed over. Right. So anyway, there's lots of there's lots of uh, design uh, variations it, for the hueculture. Uh, I cover I cover them really well in my first book uh, here, Edible Landscape and the Permaculture Twist. Got a whole uh, chapter there dedicated to different designs, techniques, and details about creating hueculture beds. But here's some pictures. Here's here's a few uh, illustrations. And now there's a couple different ways that you can uh, begin your bed that can either be by digging out a basin where you're going to do your hue culture bed, putting your wood in, taking that soil that you dug out and putting it back on top is one idea. And know that when they start out tall, they're going to drop approximately a foot a year. Um, so that, uh, you know, if you start out with a big, big hue culture bed, know that it's going to break down and not be that huge uh, element on your landscape. Now you, you know, I've having an edible landscape business over the years. I've had lots of uh, rain garden jobs, so I've, I've 
piles of soil, good soil around. So sometimes I will just start flat ground, put my wood down and go ahead and put my soil on top of that. There are just a couple of variations uh, that work. And here's a, here's a, here's a, here's a little video of, of one of our hueculture beds that's right next to our house, even just after a few years of breaking down, now covered with uh, the running comfrey. I've got raspberries in there. I do have a pawpaw that actually seeded itself right in that concave spot in full sun. So this is one of the first opportunities where I really experience, you know, pawpaws being able to grow in full sun if they have that sweet spot. And it naturally wanted to grow right there in, the, in that concave part of the hueculture bed. Uh, so that happened naturally, you know, sort of set the stage and boom, there it came. Um, and just, just know that hueculture beds can, can, can fit in almost any type of landscape. Um, even in your garden beds, if you just have small prunings, make a small one, you can play with the design uh, and really enjoy it. So have fun with the hueculture bed. Send me pictures of what you do. Oh,